The Clay Chalkville Cougars got all they wanted from Homewood in round two of the playoffs. We'll have all the analysis on that ball game, and we'll have a special guest for you too as Tribune Sports Live starts now. Bank, we focus on you. You'll never have to worry about being just another number in the system. When you're a member of the Bryant Bank family, our Bryant Bankers will work to understand who you are, where you want to go, and how we can help you to get there. We're big believers in developing relationships with our customers, and we value friendships we make along the way. Bryant Bank provides unbeatable service and legendary results. Bryant Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Two-point conversion is all Coach Talsman. We checked into a different coverage, and we, we robbed the corner because we figured they were going to throw over there to number five, and they did. And so that was a big, big, humongous play. So hats off to Jamarlin and Coach T for coming up with that. And then the fourth down, we checked into a, a bare front. We hadn't shown them all night, and that, that was big for us. Probably should have went through it a little bit earlier. But look, you know, you go through years where there's going to be that game. The second round game for everybody is the danger. That's the danger. And uh, I, I was scared of this all week, man. I, did, I didn't feel good in my stomach all week because that's a talented football team. Dude. Coach, your team, maybe more so than any other time this year, really had to work through a lot of adversity tonight. How would you feel about the way they responded to that time and time? Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm happy they won. I'm happy we made the play down there. But it was not a good effort for us, uh, period. I mean, overcoming adversity, stopping on fourth down, you know, if they make that, all we got to do is recover the onside kick and it's over anyway. So, you know, it's just a lot of things. It just was one of those weeks. And, and it, it seems like it's always this way in the second round. All right, buddy. All right, Cole, congratulations on another win, man. Uh, obviously moving on now into the third round. Uh, just how does it feel, man? Defense had to step up and make a lot of plays tonight. Uh, how would you feel about that two-point conversion you guys stopped down there? Um, you know, that was a critical point. You know, we knew they would go out and, you know, try it. And uh, Jamal and Sewell made a heck of a play, you know, making the interception. You know, you know, our coaches are hands down, you know, best in the state. You know, they schemed it up perfectly for us. Absolutely, man. Uh, just, you know, you guys haven't been in a lot of games like this this year where it's really back and forth and got to work through a lot of adversity and things like that, man. Right. How do you feel like uh, you guys responded to that, John? Uh, you know, uh, this game kind of reminded me of the Hillcrest game, you know, we had that last uh, two-point conversion, you know, and it came down to the game, and, you know, we we made the stops where it was needed, and I couldn't ask for anything more than my defense. Right. Kind of a surprise tonight, uh, Miner waits in the, in the next round now, uh, how do you feel moving into that contest? You know, Miner's a heck of a team. And uh, we're excited to play him. Are we at home? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm not positive yet. Well, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity for us. You know, right. you know we got to pre prepare him like any other team. You know, it's like a lot of people say, it's hard to beat a team twice, so we got to prepare, you know, just as harder. Right. Welcome back. Trussell Tribune editor Chris Yao joins me to talk about the Clay Chalkville Cougars and their big victory over Homewood. Chris, welcome. Thanks, Zach. It's nice to be here, man. All right, so we know that the five weeks of the playoffs can be a grind. And Jerry Hood said week, round two, week two of the playoffs is always the tough one. Your thoughts? Oh, there, there's no question. I think that you always are prepared for week one, especially when you're the region winner. You know that you've got you know the number four seed coming in. Round two is always you're not really sure what you're going to get. Are you going to get a team who is – hungry for a win or are you going to get a team who is maybe looking forward you just never know round two is is probably the most difficult round outside of the championship game if i had to guess well clay got all they wanted in round two from homewood they win this game 40 to 39 high drama all the way through especially in the fourth quarter about three minutes left homewood elects to go for two 
Oh, there's no question they got all they, they, they wanted out of uh, Homewood. And to be honest, I, I didn't expect it. Um, but Homewood came out, they played fantastic football throughout the game, and with three minutes to go, they take the ball, drive down the field, put it in the end zone, and then decision time. I'm not sure, obviously hindsight's 50-50 if you're Pat Dye, 2020 for the rest of us. But, you know, that they decide let's let's go for two here. And of course, big players make big plays in big situations, and Jamarl and Sewell made the biggest play of the night. Uh, possibly, at least until that point, for Clay Chalkville with the interception of the two-point conversion. Yeah, he steps right in and makes the interception. Then Homewood comes back, recovers the onside kick, and the drama continues. Oh, that was drama at its finest. Uh, you know, obviously onside kicks are never a given, even with the fantastic size and hands that Clay Chalkville has. But, you know, Homewood gets the onside kick, and then Clay Chalkville has to step up their defense after giving up a, a big touchdown drive. Obviously, you know, they had a little momentum from the two-point conversion, but you get fourth and inches, and uh, Coach Jerry Hood said that they went to a defense they hadn't shown for the entire evening, and their, their big guys made a play. And that's what you have to do. Again, big-time players make big-time plays. So they stuff Homewood's Derek Underwood on that fourth and inches. They take over. They pick up the first down and seal it into round three. They did. And that's what you do when you are a champion. Champions find ways to win games. And Clay Chalkville has done that throughout this season. They, they've obviously had some blowouts, but they've also been tested. Uh, I, I think the Hillcrest game – really put them in a position to to know how to win in a close setting. So they they knew what to expect and they knew it was going to be a fight and they did what they had to do to win the game. Jerry Hood said that his team was a little bit sloppy in this one. Ty Pigram wasn't sloppy, 11 for 15, uh, only 135 yards passing on the night, but he throws four touchdown passes and then he also runs for 240. Um, and two more touchdowns, so just a great night for him again. Ty Pigram is an anomaly. Um, you know, great high school quarterbacks come around once in a blue moon. We don't see them a whole lot around here. We've been very fortunate in this area to see several very good quarterbacks. Uh, Ty Pigram is just another one of those. He has been fantastic all season. When he realized that you know, maybe he wasn't going to be able to make the plays with his arm, that he had to do something different. And that, and that makes him a different player. I think when he realized that he was not going to be able to make plays with his arm, he had to do it with his legs, he was able to do it. And I think that was, that was really something that, that turned the game for Clay. You know, he, he was able to, to extend drives and extend plays. Well, I agree with you. He's a generational type player. He's 28 and 0 as a starter now, and Man. and we were talking about the player of the week earlier uh, off the air, and we said, well, you could give Ty Pigram the player of the week from Clay Chalkwell literally every week. Just about. There's no question, and, and this week is no different. I don't think he will be, but I, I think that if you go by the numbers, Ty Pigram is by far the most valuable asset that the Clay Chalkville offense has. And that's not a knock on TJ Simmons and Nico Collins because someone has to catch the ball. But, and, and those two guys make it a little bit easier for Ty, don't get me wrong. But Ty consistently makes plays when plays aren't there to be made. Well, the big story of this game may not have been Clay's offense. It may have been Clay's defense, and they and the way they stepped up. You know, they're they're kind of unheralded. They get a lot of flack. They, you know, people say they give up a lot of points, but boy, they make plays when they need to. They do. Uh, I think that especially, you know, if you go back to the Hewitt Trustful game and, and the Hillcrest game, even especially, you know, they gave up 400 yards rushing. You know, <laughs> it was a, a a really a testament to their defense that they have been able to. Stay strong throughout the year. I think that, you know, a good rushing team gives them problems. And obviously, you know, Homewood was able to do that. They were able to run the ball successfully, uh, keep the ball out of Clay's hands for, you know, several minutes at a time. And that, that was one of the big reasons that this game was so close. But, you know, again, when you have to make the plays, champions make plays. And... That's what Clay Chalkville will do from here on out. They're, that's what they're, they're known for. They're known for making plays, and that's, 
you know, this that fourth and inches play, the guy had 123 yards rushing on the night. If he has 124, we may not be here. Absolutely. Um, well, when we come back, we're going to talk to Kyle Parmley. He's going to uh, preview the Minor Tigers, the team that upset Muscle Shoals. We were all expecting this big clash of the Titans between Muscle Shoals yes, and Clay Chalkville. That's not going to happen now. We're going to have you back a little bit later in the show. We're going to do our predictions for that one. So when we return, we'll have Kyle Parmley come in, and we'll be back in just a moment. Trussell Vision Care is now proud to offer sports vision training for athletes. This sports-specific training improves hand-eye coordination and reaction time. As a former college athlete, Dr. Steele knows how important perfect vision is to succeed on the athletic field. For athletes, 2020 vision is not enough. Trustful Vision Care. Welcome back. We have a special guest tonight, Todd Geralds. The author of the book, Woodlawn, I'm sure you've probably heard about it in the movie. Um, Todd, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate so, it. a lot of people don't know this. You actually grew up your first few years here in Trustful. Yes, I did. Actually, after Dad left coaching, uh, he, he got out of coaching for seven years. And so, in third grade, I moved to Trustful and I went to school here up until he got back into coaching, which was the end of my 10th grade year. Gotcha. So, tell us a little bit about the book and how it came about. Sure, it's, uh, you know, I, I, when you're a, a kid, uh, there you're seeing everything for the first time, so you don't really realize the profundity of things at the time. So it wasn't like as a child, I said, man, what an amazing story, I'm going to write a book. I didn't do that as a seven-year-old. But uh, the older I got, the more I realized how profound this story was, uh, particularly as I got exposed to more and more uh, things that, that really showed me how amazing what God did at Woodlawn was. Um, and so uh, before my dad died, he was di diagnosed with cancer about 13 years ago. And before he died, I began interviewing him and, um, and writing notes just uh, about, and, and I even recorded conversations, thinking this is a story that should be told at some point. And really nothing really happened with that other than I, I started writing a few things here and there. About eight years ago, nine years ago, the Irwin brothers called me, and they had heard the same story from their father growing up, who was the chaplain on my dad's team, Hank Irwin. And they called me and said, we have an idea about something you know, for a film we think would be good. And we just talked, and that was pretty much where we left it. Then about four years ago, they called me and said, we want to revisit this. We really want to do this. And so they had me come in and filmed me. Uh, on on camera for two hours, they asked me questions, and I told the story. And I really, at the mo at the time, just thought how cool this was, you know, to get to mm -hmm. to do this and the possibilities with it. At the end of the conversation, they said, "Here's a contract. These are the book rights to the movie we're going to do, and we'd like to base it on your book." And I was like, "Well, that's great, except I haven't written a book yet." And they were basically like, "Well, get on it." So you had some incentive to write your book. Yeah, at that point, even it was something that I wanted to do. And at that point, um, I was—I suddenly had a timeline, which I think is oftentimes necessary for any of us sure. to get something done. And so I started writing it. So the book and the movie—how how are they similar? How are they different? That's a great question. It comes up a little bit. The uh, they are, I would say that um, they're, they're done for two different reasons. Um, the movie uh, has a definite mission uh, uh, and, and a story that it's telling that is true based on you know, the true story, but not necessarily in the particulars. When you have a movie, uh, you're having to compress a lot. I covered probably seven years in the book, and they only covered 1973-74 Woodlawn football seasons. And so a number of things that happened particularly what they did was they compressed a lot that may have happened earlier where they placed the pivotal character, Tony Nathan, in the middle of a lot of things. So um, they're very similar in the overall st story that they tell where they may be off in certain things. And they may, you know, they use, they didn't, didn't maybe, they did use artistic license to create certain characters to illustrate things that happened that would have taken another hour in a movie that you just don't have. So, um, you know, there definitely are things in the movie that, that didn't occur or may be um, a bit hyperbolic, you know, um, sure. in terms of what they're, how they convey certain things. But uh, the Nathan family and the Gerald's family, you know, we all saw the script. We all seen the movie. We love what that was. The book is a straightforward account of here's what really happened. 
kind of in the chronology that it occurred. And so they serve different purposes. So for somebody who wants the, the background and, and some of those things, um, you know, if, because there have been some Woodlawn people, that didn't happen. I, well, we know, but things like that occurred in the years preceding all this. And so, sure. you know, you take that how, how it goes. So are you surprised <laughs> at, at the success of the movie and, and did you expect that? Really, I've, I've not been surprised, not so much because uh, of, really just because it's such an amazing story. It's, I actually told Nick Bishop and Kevin Sizemore, who are two of the actors, Nick plays my dad and Kevin Sizemore plays Jerry Stearns. We went out after the Birmingham premiere and I told them, I said, I'd actually be really, really surprised if, you know, I, I, if this gets good reviews, I won't be surprised. But I won't be surprised if it doesn't, but it won't be because of the quality of the movie. It will be because it is so contrary to the worldviews of those giving the criticisms. Sure. I said, but anybody who watches this movie, it's undeniable that it's an amazing story. It's a great story. The acting and the cinematography is, is unparalleled. It's, it's outstanding. And so if they don't give it good reviews, it will only be because it flies in the face of their worldview. And so um, I'm not surprised because it's, it's, it's a very compelling story. And uh, your wife is a writer too, I hear. Yes, she is. She's written a number of devotional products. She does a lot. We have four daughters. Uh, she writes a lot geared toward young women and, and girls. Um, has done uh, the, Princess, uh, the Princess Bible series and something called Brave Girls and a number of other devotional products over the years. Fantastic. Well, it's a great book, and it's, it's one of those things where I think it's one of those things that's really needed today. You know, you, we need to look back and, and see how we can come together. And, and it's just you know, one of those things where you, know, you look at some of the stories out there today and, and race relations, and, and we need to realize that you know, what, we can come together. So the book's called Woodlawn. The movie's called Woodlawn. Todd, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Tribune Sports Live is sponsored in part by State Senator Slade Blackwell of District 15. Senator Blackwell represents parts of Talladega, Shelby, and Jefferson counties, including the Trustful area. A former high school and college athlete, Senator Blackwell is pleased to promote our local schools and student athletes. As football season gets underway, it's time to say, Go Huskies! Go Cougars! And Go Indians! Here's to a successful and safe year for all who are involved with high school athletics in our area. We'll expect clear skies Friday night as Clay Chalkville travels to Minor for the playoff game, but it will be cold. The high Friday will only be around 59 degrees and the overnight lows will be around 40 degrees. So grab your cold weather gear for the game. Jefferson Memorial Funeral Home and Gardens is home owned and operated by the Seal family. I've known Eddie Seal and his son Adam for over 25 years. They're community oriented and more importantly, good folks who know how to take care of people in their time of need. That's how Jefferson Memorial became Trustful's Funeral Home and Cemetery. Jefferson Memorial is located at 1591 Gadsden Highway. You can call them at 322-0543. Before your need arises, let Jefferson Memorial family take care of your family. All right, welcome back. Kyle Parmley joins us to preview the minor Purple Tigers. Kyle, welcome. Glad to be here. All right, so tell us a little bit about Minor. Uh, the uh, Clay Chalkwell Cougars beat them earlier in the season. It was the first game for Minor, the second for Clay Chalkwell. Yeah, Clay Chalkwell really just kind of kind of handled the game overall. They beat them 49 to 15. Uh, but it, yeah, it was Minor's first game of the season. But uh, you know, some of our area got to see them towards the end of the regular season. They beat Pinson Valley. Played really strong defense. They've got a lot of good athletes on offense, so they are they're a much different team than what Clay Chalkwell saw early on. So their first round game, they go up to Albertville, they go up to Sand Mountain, they get out to a big lead, and then things get interesting. Yeah, they got outscored 21 nothing in the fourth quarter of that game. Uh, Albertville scores a touchdown with 30 seconds to go. They've got to go for two to tie it, and they actually got it on the first try, but the call it get called back because of like an interference or something, and so they fail on the next play. 
but they turn around and get the onside kick and have one last shot to the end zone that fell incomplete. So Miner held on for a two points, two point victory, but a scare in the first round. And last week they do the unexpected that no one expected. Yeah. They beat Muscle Shoals. Yeah, this was this was setting up to be Clay Chalwell's big matchup. Undefeated Clay Chalwell, undefeated Muscle Shoals. And I'm not sure if Muscle Shoals just overlooked Miner or what, but Miner got out to a 13-point lead early. And Muscle Shoals brought it back to a tie game. They could have taken the lead, but their, their extra point after a touchdown was blocked. And Miner comes down with a 95-yard drive on the last drive of the game. And they cap it off. 40-yard Hail Mary pass with five seconds to go to win. Unbelievable finish in both games for Miner so far in the postseason. So Miner, really, they're 8-4 and four on the year. They've got four losses to playoff teams, correct? Yeah, they, they've only lost to Clay Chalwell, Walker, Gardendale, and Homewood. All four of those teams are playoff teams this year. And, yeah, like you said, they started off 4-4. Four and four. They've won six straight. And overall this year, they're 2-4 and four at home, but they're 6-0 and oh on the road. But – they're, they're going to be at home against Clay Chalkville, where they've only won two out of six this year. So they're a completely different team, really, from the beginning yeah. of the season. Looks like they're doing it a lot, running the ball and stopping the run on defense. What's the difference for this team from the beginning of the season to now? Well, I've talked to head coach George Bates of them, from them a couple times this season, and um, they've, got, they've got one kid. His name's Jalen Adams, just a, an electric athlete, can do anything you want. Their only problem is they've only got one. And he plays running back. He plays receiver. They get him the ball however they can. Um, but unfortunately, they don't, they don't have that quarterback that can win the game by himself. And they're really going to they're really gonna have to hope for more than just Adams to show up because Adams himself is going to make life difficult for Clay Chalkwell. But for Miner to be able to get there with Clay and possibly beat them, they're going to have to have more. So it's going to be a tough matchup for them. I was, my next question was going to be, how do they match up with Clay now versus earlier in the season? What's the difference? Yeah, I mean, much better matchup. They, uh, their, <laughs> Coach Bates told me, he was like, you know, after we got to 4-4, four four, he was saying, well, we just, let's get a one-game winning streak. Let's get a two-game winning streak. Now they're up to six. So a lot of, lot of momentum. Uh, they're, they're really confident in themselves right now. Um, they're playing well. Uh, but, yeah, they – I mean, they're, they are a really athletic football team. And we've seen that, you know, Clay's going to really, they're going to have to stop somebody. They've struggled with that the last couple of weeks. They're going to have to play some defense to beat this team. All right, so I'm going to ask you the big question. Does Miner have another upset in them? You know, I don't think so. Um, we've talked about this before, how if you're going to beat Clay Chalk, well, you have to answer every single time you've got the football. And I don't think... I don't think Miner has enough tools to do that. You know, I don't think they have that quarterback that you can look at in the huddle and say, all right, he's going to lead us and we're going to win this ball game. They've had two that have gone back and forth this year. So I, think that, I actually think they'll give them a good game, but no, I don't think they've got enough to, to get, over the, get over the hill. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Kyle Parmley doing a great job again. Thank you, Kyle. When we come back, we're going to wrap things up. We'll have a player of the week from the Clay Chalkwell Cougars and we'll have a prediction for you on the game. We'll be back. Gunner Roy would like to invite you to visit one of their three stores on Deerfoot Parkway. Both shell locations on Deerfoot offer delicious Hunt Brothers pizza, one at Highway 11 and the other at Old Springville Road, which was a BP and now has a fabulous new look customers need to see to believe. The Chevron at Happy Hollow Road features mouth-watering pop donuts that are delivered fresh each and every morning. A proud supporter of the community for more than 20 years, offering quality products at a fair price in a clean environment with friendly and efficient service, Gunner Oil. And now it's time for Tribune Sports Live Player of the Week, Clay Chalkville's very own cornerback, Jamarlin Sewell. He stepped in front of Homewood's two-point conversion attempt late in the fourth quarter to preserve a one-point lead. Sewell finished the game with four tackles and the decisive interception. He also had a pick six, but was taken back due to a roughing the passer penalty. Congratulations, Jamarlin. This has been Tribune Sports Live, Player of the Week, brought to you by Gunter Oil. Whether you're looking to buy your first home or you're trying to sell the one you're in now and need advice from a realtor, turn to Lee Marlowe, Realty South Realtor. Contact Lee today at 205-913-9559 
or visit Lee at LeeMarlowHomes.com. Paul Davis Emergency Services of Northeast Birmingham helps by providing needed cleanup and restoration services. Through the appropriate tools and processes, we avoid wasting valuable time to get your property to its previous state as quickly as we possibly can. Through our experience with restoration services in Birmingham, we can determine the necessary services depending on your property and type of damage, which may include smoke and fire damage restoration, water damage restoration, wind damage restoration, and mold removal. Paul Davis, Recover, Reconstruct, Restore. 205-687-0556. All right, welcome back. It's prediction time. And Chris, you've heard Kyle talk about Miner and the big improvements they've made this year. Um, a team that's really pretty much come out of nowhere. Nobody thought that they'd get out of the first round, much less the second. And yet here they are, again, a rematch against Clay Chalkville. They got blown out the first time these two teams played. What do you think as the, as the uh, Cougars come to town? Well, the last time I was on this show, uh, I talked about how inconsistent Miner was. It was when they played Pinson Valley inconsistency throughout the year, but they're playing their best football of the season right now. And I guess that's what you have to do. You have to, you know, you have to make your season start right now. If you can get to the playoffs, the second season starts and you're there. So right now, I, I think Miner has the ability to run the football. And I think that that's Clay's, um, that's Clay's kryptonite almost. Um, so if they can stop the run and, and run the football, I think this is going to be a little bit closer, actually a lot closer than the last one. I'd say um, I'm, going to, I'm going to give this one to Clay Chalkville because I think, again, big players make big plays. And uh, I, I think it'll be a little bit closer, though. I think it'll be something like 42 to 31, something like that. Well, I'm with you on this one. I, I, just, I know that they can stop the run, but that's not what Clay does well. You know, they're going to they're gonna spread out. They're going to throw the bomb. They're going to throw over you. They're going to hit the out passes to these receivers. Simmons and Collins can make plays. And I just don't see Miner being able to cover these guys. And I, I just don't see him able to get into a scoring match with Clay either. So I like Clay. I'm going to say 45-28 Cougars. The Cougars marching on and what looks like it's going to be a huge matchup with Opelika down the road. Yeah, Opelika, boy, they, they put one on Hillcrest uh... – Friday night, and, and that's a, another team that runs the ball really well. So I don't want to say we're on a collision course because clearly that – Anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen, especially this week because Opelika and uh, I believe it's Spanish Fort, both undefeated, and Opelika has to travel. So we'll see. Um, but I'm really excited to see how the rest of this playoff season uh, unfolds, and I think that it's going to be something fantastic for everybody to watch. All right. Well, that's our show. Special thanks to Todd Geralds who stopped by. Uh, great guy, great book. Uh, we wish him all the best. We'll be back next week and we'll be uh, reviewing this game of the Minor Tigers and the Clay Chaffle Cougars. For Chris Yow, I'm Zach Steele. Good night, everybody.